Hello, hello, hello. Let's get started. Chapter 6 Strangers in Town. Back in their apartment, Derek kicked the chair in front of the computer console and sent it skidding across the hard floor into the other one. Those filthy, stinking, walking, frosted slag heaps. What about the first law? Doesn't that apply to the keys? Apparently not, Ariel said bitterly. If Kimo was telling the truth when he said that their keys were all initialized in that processing machine, and that they only work for the type of being that initializes them, then their keys will only work for robots. And if they initialize them by hand, that ruins them for us, too. They listened to my argument because of the first law, not because they had keys that could send us away. I feel like an utter flute fool standing there holding that key when nothing happened. Then they scanned the wall to find out how I got in and gave me my boot back. He looked down at the matching boots that he wore on his feet again. You can bet the same trick won't work a second time. But at least they just threw us out. There wasn't any penalty or anything. She sighed and sat down in one of the chairs was where it was, without bothering to move it back in its place. I was so proud of myself for talking my way in to see Kimo, too. The first law did us that much good, at least. He started pacing the perimeter of the small room, I thought we were so close to getting away from here. I thought we had it. He paused when he saw Ariel leaning forward in the chair, staring glumly at the floor. She glanced up at him and nodded dejectedly. Well, look, it isn't over yet. I mean, we aren't going to give up. He sat down in the console chair and glazed at the blank screen thoughtfully. All right, what's our next move? Let's see. He started working on the keyboard. She watched him for a moment. You're looking for the other humans on the planet, I suppose. Of course. They got here, somehow. We can leave the exact same way, whatever it was. But we haven't made any progress finding them. What else can we do? We didn't really reply ourselves before. I figured Kimo was our best bet, and the other humans just the backup. Now it's time to get serious about them. I hope it makes a difference. Her tone was still discouraged, but she pulled her chair closer. I'll start with that file we had earlier, said Derek. Hey, we're in luck. Really? She looked up hopefully. The two strangers who are traveling together have had been sighted several more times. What about the third? No, there's no more mention of that one. I hope he's okay. I wonder if the third one's with the other two, or if they just happened to arrive about the same time. If they came separately, then we might just have two ways to get away from Robot City. Good point, said Derek. I hope that the third one is simply hiding better than the other two. What do you mean? If they all came together, the third one could have left again in the only transportation, whatever it was. Oh, Derek, why did you have to bring that up? We have to consider all the possibilities, don't we? He turned to look at her. Besides, getting in touch with some people for a change is still going to be an advantage. At some point, someone will come back for them. They'll be the part of the spacefaring community, at least, not like these isolationist robots. Suppose we could try to think along that line. Do we have any way of guessing who they could be? I'll enter what we have. The real problem is that we don't know the location of this planet. We know that Dr. Avery wanted Robot City to be away from the beated, beaten track, said Ariel. My mother always emphasized how eccentric he was. I'm certain we aren't near any major space lanes. I don't think we're in too much of a backwater either. If Dr. Avery was the megalomaniac you said, then at some point he probably planned to show off his success to other people. Mother would have wanted to see it, and you know what? He faced a lot of skeptics on Aurora. Eventually he'd want to prove to them that he could do what he said. Good, we don't have much to go on, but it's something. Derek summarized the information he'd read on the screen. Aurora is probably the nearest habitable planet, and it's almost certainly the nearest planet of any significance. If we do get a ride out of here, that would be convenient, she observed. I'm willing to take small favors. Let me go on. The odds of three people just landing here at the almost the same time, purely by chance, in two spacecraft, are too low to think about. One spacecraft, maybe, if it had mechanical trouble or something, but not two. Assuming we are close to a space line, and remembering that this is all j just surmise, how anyhow, we have to figure that our visitors came here deliberately. I can't honestly see why anyone would want to come here, said Ariel. There's no business to conduct, and it's not exactly a fun city. There's no entertainment or anything. I know, and pioneering commercial interests would show up in force, not one or two people at a time. 
Individuals wouldn't have much of anything to do here that I can think of, she went on. Even if they weren't, I weren't sick, I'd still want to get away from here. The robots run everything on their terms. I think we can rule ourselves out as the reason, don't you? Derek asked. As far as we know, no one has any way of knowing that either of us is here. Don't I know it? She shook her head in resignation with a wistful smile. So that leaves Robot City itself as the reason. But I told you that Dr. Avery kept his location a secret. My mother made sure that was very important to him. You said he also said he disappeared a long time ago. If he's dead, he could have left some information behind in the office that someone got, or just spilled the secret someplace else out in space before he died. And now they've used the information to come here, or he's back himself. With a guy like that, anything's possible, she said reluctantly. But it sounds out of character for him to reveal more than he wanted. Besides, any people who had learned the secret would have shown up here a long time ago. Not if it was well hidden. Maybe they just found it. Maybe, I guess. She looked at him. Do you think it's Avery? No. The sightings aren't consistent with his ability to go into that office in the compass tower. Our visitors are as lost as we are, and they can get us off this rock, too. So much for them finding Robot City, said Ariel. What about us finding them? I wish I'd had the time to streamline the computer by now. It just, just isn't that reliable. If it was, we could use it to help. We can try, can't we? Can't you give some kind of standing instruction to the robots to look for the people? Yeah, I can try, but we'd have the same problems as before. The instructions don't reach every single robot, and they take a long time to read a lot, reach a lot of them. And that even assumes Dr. Avery didn't counter-program against it for some weird reason of his own. She shook her head. He was too paranoid. If he was careful enough to keep the secret of this place, I'm sure he would have approved of ordering the robots to keep watch for outsiders. Well, we already know that some robots are reporting their sightings. I'll order all robots to do that, and... He trailed off. Well, I don't know. They were just going around in circles. What's wrong? Well, I just don't know what will make a difference, like I said. It's just more of what's already in the computer. All we can do is give them the instructions and hope they give us some information, she said. Then we'll try to think of something else. What's wrong with that? Yeah, here goes. What we really need is for the robots to detain them if they can, and I don't see how they can do that. That might violate the first law. Wouldn't that depend on the particulars of the situation? Maybe the robots could persuade them to come. Anyway, the robots just have to avoid harming them, and they might want to see us. I guess they could bring us bring them here, don't you? I'm putting in the order. If there are any robots you can find and identify these strangers, they are to bring them here if the time comes. He sat back in his chair with a sigh. I just don't know if any of this will make a difference. We've been going at this pretty hard, said Ariel. Why don't we take a break? It's time for us to eat something anyway. Ugh, said Derek, and they both laughed. All right. We'll force down anything we can stomach from the processor for lunch. After that, assuming we live, we'll probably be glad to go out and engage in endless debates of uncooperative robots. Ariel got up smiling. I guess we can take our motivation wherever we find it. After they had eaten, they ventured out once more to see if they could find some evidence of strangers in the city. Derek started out eager and full of energy, in large part because Ariel's illness was on his mind. He wanted to make sure that she knew he wasn't dawdling. At her suggestion, he agreed after a while to take it easy. Rushing around wasn't likely to help at this stage of the search. They had alerted the robots as much as they could, and they had a list of locations of previous sightings. Now all they could do was walk around, hoping to chance upon cross a lead. The worst problem was that the sightings offered no pattern that they could recognize. Since the lone traveler had not been reported at all for some time, they decided to forget about that one for the present. The sightings of the two traveling together were completely random as far as they could tell. The most recent sighting had taken place on the outskirts of the city. They rode the tunnels to the end of the, of the trunk line at the edge of the city, then had to surface. There they managed to hitch a ride in a cab of a huge liquid transporter of some kind. Then they hopped off when its roots diverged from theirs. As they walked, they got their first look at the log, long, three-stage mole device that dug the underground tunnels and left a fully equipped, functioning platform system behind. This segment was not being used because it had been connected to the main system elsewhere, 
Otherwise, the mole device would have been underground and out of sight. It also simultaneously mined ores for construction and other uses, according to a foreman robot whom Derek questioned. It seemed to be a modified version of a gate-like device he had seen shifting the asteroid in search of the original key for the AB robots. Shortly after waking up with amnesia and the great mining and construction devices that had been crucial to the automatic shape-changing of the city. They also saw a number of buildings under construction and some freshly finished. These included some smaller domes of bronze dianite reminiscent of the key center. Nowhere, however, did any of the robots remember any additional sightings of humans. And thus ends chapter 6. A very short chapter indeed. <laughs> Have a good rest of the day.